Two weeks until Election Day in Portland's future is on the ballot. The effort to reform the Rose City's form of government is in front of voters with more than two years of work to determine this proposal. And Brandon Thompson explaining each piece while sharing what supporters and critics think about it. And Jeff, you started our reporting on this years ago, and from nearly everyone we've spoken about, everyone seems to agree that the form of government needs to change. The reason a city that's grown too big for its commission form of government over the past century and too complex for elected leaders to run city departments rather than responding to the people they represent. A city government that needs to change. We haven't grown in terms of our councillors in 110 years. Meanwhile, our city has more than tripled. And believe me, our bureaucracy has more than tripled and our problems have more than tripled. Portland's the last city in America to use a commission form of government. So this is a uniquely Portland problem. The uniquely Portland problem pits elected representatives running city bureaus, acting as department heads, instead of responding to the people who vote for them. If you've been in Portland for any amount of time, you've heard about our silos down in City Hall, the fact that our different bureaus basically operate independently. In a city of 650,000, there are just five commissioners elected citywide, leaving several areas of the city overlooked. Far more as you move out of the central district is the sense that no one is representing me, no one understands my issues, no one is looking out for me, I do not know who to call, and if I were to call someone, would anyone even pick up the phone? Melanie billings Yun was co-chair of the commission to reform Portland's government. After nearly two years of public meetings and countless hours of testimony, on a 17-3 to 3 vote, the commission proposed a citywide mayor and city administrator to oversee the city's bureaus. Four city council districts will be formed, with three members from each for a 12-member city council. Voters in Portland would decide to adopt proportional ranked choice voting, also known as single transferable vote. For example, let's say the election is between Coin Six's anchor team. Voters would rank their preference of candidate, first, second, third, and so on. First, the number of first place votes are counted. Because voters will elect three councillors per district, the threshold is 25% plus one. Say Jeff hits that threshold. The excess votes are proportionally picked, and those voters' second place votes are redistributed distributed, say, to Elizabeth and Natasha. If three members are not elected after that, the last placed candidate is eliminated and those voters' second choice votes are redistributed among the candidates. We created a system in which we have big districts so that we're not looking at one in which we have very small little districts only looking out for one section of the city. We are going to create something which our city councilors are also looking out for the whole city. Some good ideas. There are also some deeply concerning and highly unusual proposals in that ballot measure too. Maps thinks the mayor should have a stronger role than just a tie-breaking vote, wishing for a veto power for the executive as well. He released his own proposal, a proposal that's more of a wish list than a formal proposal. He hopes to bring it to next year's ballot if this year's proposal does not pass. In it, he calls for seven single-member districts. I think it's not clear what kind of representation um, we're likely to get from the system, nor is it clear how um, a single transferable system welded onto a, a multi-member districts is going to make Portland any better at housing people or filling potholes or combating climate change. billings Yun says as opposed to majority rules all, the proposal in front of voters right now would give minority groups a voice who she says have been underrepresented in the city's past. When we tried to draw seven individual districts, every single one was dominated by white voters, every single one was dominated by householders, every single one was dominated by people who had incomes of $70,000 a year or more. Getting our charter reform correct, I believe, is one of the most important things that um, Portlanders can do to make our city work better. billings Yun and MAPS agree Portland's government needs to change the test for voters, deciding if the proposal in front of them is the right one. So ranked choice voting is a growing trend, but pairing it with multi-member districts, that is more rare. There are places like Cambridge, Massachusetts, Dublin, and Glasgow that use it. So next week we're going to dive into what is the right amount of districts, what is the size for counselors, what did the research show behind that? Yeah.